Hello and welcome to Power Designer. My name is Jeff Giles and I'll be your guide for this Power Designer demonstration. Today's topic is on the Power Designer user interface. We'll explore the five main views and how to organize them. When you first start Power Designer, you're presented with the welcome page. Now the welcome page gives you one click access to all your recent projects, workspaces, and models. In addition, it provides a direct link to the new model and new project dialogues as well as a range of help materials. To suppress this page in the future, just select Do Not Show This Page Again checkbox. Don't worry, you can always redisplay it at any time by selecting Welcome Page from the View menu. Right now, I'll just click the Close button to remove this window for now. The default Power Designer application window is organized by a series of views. Let's take a look at each view in a little bit more detail. The first view we're going to take a look at is the Object Browser. Now the object browser is a single view with up to three sub-views. They're located as tabs down at the bottom. The local tab displays your models and the objects that belong to the models. But there's also two others. There's one called the glossary, which displays the enterprise glossary, as well as one called the repository, which will display all of the models and things in your repository. For now, we'll just stay with the local tab. The next view we're going to take a look at is the canvas. Now the canvas is where all of the graphics show up and it's a little different from the object browser in that the tabs are along the top. So right now you see I've got two tabs here, one that's got a logical model and one that's got a physical model. If I click the tab called main physical diagram, then we'll display the physical diagram. So there can be a whole bunch of tabs across the top and each tab will represent a model diagram that you happen to have open. Let's move over to the toolbox located over here on the far right side of the application window. Now the toolbox displays the graphical tools that will help you quickly build diagrams. Um, and of course those diagrams show up in the canvas. The available tools depend on the type of model that you currently have selected. If you notice the toolbox here, there's a toolbar called, in this case, physical diagram. So right now the tools are available to create a physical diagram, but it does change from time to time. Now I just clicked on my logical view here uh, with the logical diagram, and you'll notice that the toolbar has now changed to logical diagram. So this toolbar will change from time to time. It all depends on the type of model you're working with. Let's take a look at the bottom of the screen here. There's a window called, or a view called, the results list. And the results list, as its name implies, is a list of results. So whenever you run something like a find or a check model, the results will show up in the results list. And right next to it is the output view. The output view displays the progress of any power designer process, like uh, reverse engineering or generating a model. Uh, you can print the output as a text file and save it. One thing that you'll notice about all of these views except the canvas, is that there's a title bar along the top, and towards the right side there are three icons, a black triangle, something that looks like a push pin, and an X. What we're going to do now is take a look at how those icons can help us arrange the views. If I click on this black downward pointing triangle, it displays a menu, and on the menu there's float, show, dock as, tab document, auto hide, and hide. So let's take a look at each one of these in some detail. The first menu item is float. So if we select float, what happens is the window becomes its own independent window. If you look in the upper left hand corner of the screen here, you'll see that there's an output window and it's basically free floating. What that means is I can just drag this around and reposition it somewhere else on the screen. What I'm going to do now is I'm just going to redock this window. Don't worry, I'll talk about this in more detail later when we get to this subject, but essentially I just put it back where it came from. And I did that so I could show you another way that you could float uh, one of these views, and that's just by dragging its title bar. If I position the mouse pointer on the title bar and simply drag, then that releases the window and it floats once again. So I'm just going to redock it. Now let's take a look at hiding a window. So we can float a window, let's hide a window. And of course hide a window hides it from the display. Now how do we get a window back once we've hidden it? To get a window back just go to the view menu 
Click the View menu and then towards the bottom you'll see a series of check marks and there's Browser, Output, Result List, Toolbox. So anything with a check mark next to it indicates that it's currently visible. And of course anything without a check mark is hidden, such as Output. If I click it again, it comes back in the exact location from where it was hidden. Also the X at the end here, it basically does the same thing. It closes a window and you bring it back exactly the same way. Now the next thing we're going to take a look at is something called Auto Hide. I find Auto Hide works pretty well with the toolbox. So over here in the toolbox, you'll notice we have this push pin. It's called Auto Hide. It's the same Auto Hide that you can find from the menu. It's just that it's an icon. And if I click it, what you'll notice is that the toolbox has now sort of collapsed itself up into uh, the side. So Auto Hide hides the view as a small tab on the screen and it will re-expand when you hover over it. You'll notice that the push pin, which was originally vertical, is now horizontal. So if I want to lock this or pin this back where it was, I just move my mouse pointer over the Auto Hide pin, click it, and it comes back where it was located. The canvas does not have a menu bar like the other views, but it does have a context menu. If you right click on a diagram tab, you can access a menu that lets you close a diagram, close all the diagrams, uh, except a particular diagram. You can also split the canvas horizontally or vertically. So let's take a look at that. If I move my mouse pointer over this tab here called Overall Logical View, and then right click to get the context menu, I can close this current uh, diagram view. I can close all the tabs except the one that I'm currently on. And you can also create a horizontal tab group or a vertical tab group. So let me show you how that works. I'll explain the details about this a little bit later, but for now I'll just show you how it works. You can see here that I now have an overall logical view on the bottom and a main physical view on the top. I'm going to reset this, but I'll tell you how it works a little bit later. And I'm back to having two tabs here. Next thing we're going to talk about is arranging the views. You can organize the views to suit your workflow. You can place a view next to another view or above it or below it. You can also group the views within other views. So now I'm going to explain to you what I was doing a little bit earlier with that funny little icon. It's something called a dock control. Now the dock control allows you to change the layout of the application and it has two basic parts to it. One which is the dock selector which allows you to place a view above or below or next to another view. And there's also something called the central dock selector which groups one view within another view. So let's take a look at how that works. Let's say instead of having the output and result list be down here at the bottom side by side, maybe I want the result list to be located below the canvas. One of the things that I can do is I can use this dock control to put a view underneath another view. Remember I told you you could float a view by dragging its title bar? Well that's what we're going to do. We're going to take the title bar and we're going to drag it into another window. So right now the result list is being dragged and you're going to see this funny little icon here and it's got four directional triangles. If I place the mouse pointer over a triangle it turns blue and you'll also notice that there's sort of a gray shaded box which indicates where this window or this view will end up when I release the mouse button. So if I move it to the right, it'll be located to the right. If I move it above, it'll occupy the space above. And to the left, it'll occupy the space to the left. Notice that the gray shaded area is limited to just the canvas window. For now, I'm just going to drop it at the bottom. The next thing we're going to talk about is grouping a view inside of another view. So I'm going to take this result list view and I'm actually going to group it inside of the canvas. I perform the same operation by just floating the window by dragging its title bar 
and this time I'm going to put it in the middle. Now, it's hard to see from this little icon here, but it essentially looks like an inverted file folder with tabs running along the bottom. And when I release the mouse button here, what you'll notice is that the results list shows up at the top as a tab inside of the canvas window. Again, I can still see the diagrams, but now this result list is a tab that I can also click on. Now the other windows behave a little bit differently. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what happens when I take this result list and I group it inside of the output. Again, all I have to do is drag the tab. And now I'm down here at the bottom in the output. And when I put it on the center here, it's a little different. There's, the tabs are actually located in the lower left hand corner here. So I've got a result list and an output list and I can click on any one of these tabs. Now that's grouping them within each other. There's one more thing that you can do and that is pinning one of these views to the extreme left, right, top, or bottom of the application. So if I take this same results list and float it again, but this time if I move over towards the far, far left hand side, you'll see that there's a, a blue indicator over here. There's also one at the top and the bottom and the right of the extreme edges of this application. So when I release now, you'll see that I have the results list showing up on the far left hand side. If I want to change the amount of space allocated for each view, I can move the mouse pointer between two panes and I can drag it and that will resize the area. And that's it. We just explored how to hide, show, and rearrange views in Power Designer. And that concludes today's Power Designer demonstration. I hope you found it useful. For more information about Sandhill Consultants and how we can help you with your modeling practice, See us at www.sandhillconsultants.com. Thanks for watching.